revisiting the idea of using the Google Keep note-taking app to organize my patterns. And I'll get into the advantages and disadvantages in just a little while. Um, for a long time, I have uh, stored my patterns in uh, sort of a cataloging system where I have uh, a pattern folder and all the different companies and websites that I've gotten patterns from. If it's a, a PDF pattern, I have the entire pattern stored in here along with little images of different things that I need to um, to scroll through. Um, if it's a pattern that is not a PDF pattern that I have the physical pattern, it's also in here uh, as a, let's just pull up a McCall's pattern. Um, it's just in here as a little image so that I can see what's in the pattern, but the actual physical pattern is not in here. But it is not easy to scroll through every one of these folders looking for patterns. And also Windows, uh, the, the way you tag files is not efficient or dependable. I can go into a lot of detail about that, but I won't. But I did not find an easy way to tag files without putting in a lot of work. So um, I kind of still use that folder storage system, but I'm only using it to store physical PDF patterns and images that I need to use in my, uh, my Google organizing or the Google Keep organizing folder. Um, there are other apps that you can download. I've tried many of them. I've purchased a few that some have quit being supported and some went up on a subscription price or whatever, and they just did not work for me. Uh, Trello is one that's really popular. I've seen it mentioned many times, so I went and downloaded it. Um, I don't really like the board system of uh, listing the patterns. So for me, that was not, uh, I didn't like it as much as I like the Google Keep. But you can check out that app and you may like it better than this one. And there's also uh, other apps on the App Store that you can buy or download and you can try those out. But I um, decided to... Um, go ahead and use the Google Keep. Um, there is the mobile app. I uh, have heard that they are no longer supporting the, uh, the mobile app. <laughs> it's hard for me to say. Uh, I heard that it, they quit supporting it in uh, 2021. I think I read that on, on one of the uh, searches that I did. I don't know if that's so because I do have the mobile app and it is still working. So if you don't have the mobile app, you can get to it from uh, a browser, keep.google.com. So most of the time you can do that right on your phone. Um, it is tied to your Google um, account, and uh, you can also get to it um, from the Google Apps. And I'm clicking up here next to my little picture, and you just scroll down and you'll see Google Keep. So it's not hard to find. I think that the main advantage to me is I believe that Google Keep is going to be around for a while in some form. And I think that being a large company like Google, I think that we will still have access to our notes in some way. I can't say that for sure, but I think that it's probably going to be more reliable. One question that I had was, is there a limit to how many notes that you can add to Google Keep and because for me every single note is a different pattern and I have lots of patterns that I want to put in here and uh, most of the searches that I came up with um, I did not check it out on the Google site at all but most of the searches are saying that there is no limit to how many notes. Some of the comments said that there is a limit to how much information that you can put in each note um, I don't need to put a whole lot of information there, so that's not going to be a problem for me. Uh, someone did mention that they only allow you to put 50 labels, and 50 is going to be plenty. I probably won't even use 20, so I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. But I really can't, haven't verified this information that I found. It's usually pretty reliable. 
So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to continue adding my patterns knowing that um, I'm, I'm probably not going to have any problems. Just want to go through just a little tour of the program up here in the upper left hand corner. You'll see the main menu. I'm just hovering my mouse over it. When you click on it, the little toolbar goes away, gives you a little bit more room on the window. So when you click on notes, that's going to be all of your notes, except for the ones that you have archived. Um, reminders, you can add reminders to your patterns and they would show up under the reminders tab. I have not used that feature yet. Anything with this little symbol by it or all of your labels that you uh, have categorized your patterns into. And each note can be classified under multiple labels so that when you start filtering out each one of these labels, that pattern can be can show up in, in many different labels. Um, you edit your labels, you go down toward the bottom of this menu and you click on edit labels, you can create a new label. If you hover your mouse over each one of the labels, this little garbage can shows up and you can um, click on that and delete it. You can go and edit the label itself by clicking on that and changing the name. So that's pretty easy to use. The archive section would be if you archived any of your notes or your pa patterns. And most of the time, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the time I have done it by accident. Um, so for instance, if I go into my Forte top and dress and I click on this little archive button, it will move it into the archive, but it will no longer be showing up in my notes. So if I want it back in my, my main category, I go to the archive and I can unarchive it by clicking on the same little icon. And so that'll fix that. So if you're missing a pattern, sometimes it's because you've accidentally archived it. And the trash would be, I think, anything that you've deleted. And so I've I've deleted a whole bunch of stuff that I was playing with. And um, so anyway, that's where your uh, trash would be. So in the search column, um, let me open up my patterns again. In the search area here, you can search by labels or or anything that you uh, you need. Or for, for me, I usually include the pattern company name in the description of the pattern, for instance, Love Notions. And as I begin to type the name, it's going to pull up any pattern that it finds that has those words in it. So that's a, a pretty cool way to uh, look up uh, a different pattern company. You can also use labels, uh, use your pattern company names under the labels, but I don't choose to do that because it's so much easier if you consistently type your company names in the same way, you'll be able to find them with just a keyword like that. So um, the next section would be, this would be um, the refresh button that would sync, I think, everything. I believe what it's doing is syncing it to the cloud. And that would be if you're adding patterns from your iPhone, um, different devices that um, that would be to ref refresh the list. This is just a different way of looking at your list. You can choose to have them all stacked on top of each other or you can go into a grid uh, format here. I'm not sure if you can um, change the grid. You might be able to do that in settings. I have not uh, really played with this a whole lot. You can enable the dark theme, um, enable sharing. There's not, not a whole lot to this program, but it, it again, it does exactly what I need it to do. So let's go through the process of how I add a pattern. And um, let's just go into, Let's just look at the laundry day tea again because I added several pictures and I kind of want to show you how I put that one. So what you're going to do is just start taking a note and it's going to come up in the description area here. So I'm going to click on title 
and I'm going to type laundry day T. I'm just going to put a 2 next to it since I already have it in there. And then when I click on take a note, the first thing I'm going to put is the name of the company or the website or magazine, wherever the pattern came from. And I like that to be first in my, my list. And I'm going to press the enter key, start a new line. And then what I do is I'll go, I'll pull in my folder here where that pattern is located. And in the path area here, I'll just click on that and it's highlighted. I'm going to press control C and then I'll come back to this description here and then control V and it tells me where it's located on my hard drive. I don't believe that this is a clickable um, item here, but you can actually um, just copy that control C and you can go over to your Windows folders and then just up here in the path, you can control V that path, press enter, and it's going to bring you right to that folder. So that's a quick way to get to a folder. You can add website links here by just cop copying the website uh, URL and putting it in here. So that would take you right to a website uh, where you need the information. I like to go through each one of these items one by one so that I don't forget to, to put something in there. So uh, the first one's going to be a reminder or when you want to start the project or anything that you need to be reminded of. You can add a collaborator, which I'll probably never use. And then there's a, a neat little feature here. When you click on background, you can assign a color to it um, just if you're organizing your patterns by a certain thing because because you can I think um, filter out in a search I think you can filter out these these colors not certain about that but it seems like I saw a way to do that but it is kind of neat to add colors and so the next tab is um, the image and here is where I would go into the pattern my computer wants to go to sleep on me and choose some images that I have saved. And I'm going to show you how I came up with these images right here. It's still in the open command. So what I would do is go to a file. Let's see if I can find one that has the picture that I want. And if this is not big enough, I can actually double click on that in another window and open the PDF. But uh, for now, this is going to be plenty. And I can also scroll down and see the fabric requirements and and um, and clip those out. But the way I was able to clip out the images that I wanted for my laundry day T, I used the uh, snipping tool in um, Windows. It comes with the the program, and you just uh, do a search in your taskbar, and you'll find the snipping tool. And you would click on New, and then um, you would come over here and just kind of draw a little box around the part that you want to keep. And it seems like nothing has happened, but if you open up your snipping tool again, there's the, the clip that I just uh, clipped out. And then you can go to save and you can save, change the name and save it um, as a JPEG or whatever you need and store it in the folder where you want it. But I've already got it, so I'm not going to use that. So what I would do is I would go in here in my images. I've got a lot of stuff going on in this folder and I'm starting it by type and just looking for the JPEGs that I have. And I would choose, this is like the fabric requirements, um, the size chart. These are things that I've already clipped out. I'm not sure, and I might try it right now, to, if you can do more than one image at a time. I'm going to hold my shift key down and select all three. Let's just see if the program will take it. It looks like it did, so that's that's nice to do that. So um, then right here is the archive button, and then I go to these three dots to more. And then I'm going to add a label. And you can try out some of these other things in here. But for me, I'm just using the labels. 
and I'm going to say I own it. I'm going to say it belongs to dresses, tops, and those are the labels that I want to add to it. And then I'm going to click on uh, done. So there's the pattern that I just put in. If you have a pattern that you can't really see the uh, pictures very well, you just um, you can go to your list mode and it's going to be a little bit easier to see or you can just click on the pattern and then click on the image and it's going to be a lot bigger and then you can scroll through all the images that belong to that pattern. Um, another thing that I like is um, if you're looking at your patterns and you trying to decide what project you want to work on next, you can come in here and when you hover over a pattern, you're going to see a little pin uh, attack that you can pin this note. And if I click on it, it's going to move that pattern to the top of my list. And I can go in through and, and, and choose some patterns that I may want to work on and um, just accumulate a few favorites that I can come in here and decide later which ones I want to do and then I can unpin them and it will put them back into the sorted list. All right, um, let's see if I want to look at all the patterns that have dresses in them I can click on that so that's pretty uh, self-explanatory there. So as you can see, it's really easy to get around this program. It's easy to find your way and, and, uh, and understand what every little icon means. There's not a lot of uh, choices and, and parts of the program that you need to learn. I think it has everything that I need and, and not a lot of clutter. So take a look at this one and see if it's gonna serve your needs for organizing your patterns or um, try out Trello or some of the others that are out there. But I just wanted to give a little uh, review of what I think about Google Keep as an alternative for organizing.